Hello and welcome, this is Roofmonger. And today we got some interesting news here as the developers of Guilty Gear Strive Arc System Works have put out their next edition of the Developers Backyard where they take questions from the community and do their best to answer them. It's great to see the developers interact with the community and also get a bit of an idea where the game is going and what state the game is shaping up to be. And before we get to the Q&A, I just want to say they are still taking questions for further Q&As. So if you would like to send in your own questions to the developers, and also if you just want to see the original Q&A as well, check the video description. And with that said, let's get into it. So the first question that was fielded, is your goal with Guilty Gear Strive to create a complex fighting game or a simple one? And with that, the developers state first up here that simple and easy are very different things. They've mentioned it before, but they really want to hammer that specific point home. But going into it, they were not happy with previous Guilty Gear games in that new players specifically could watch a match and fundamentally not understand what was happening in a high level match. And with that in mind, not really be motivated to improve just by watching it because they don't really know what's going on. And I guess fair enough, right? Due to that, they are working to make moves and just the general look of the game much easier to understand visually compared to earlier games in the series. But rest assured, the hard stuff is still going to be hard and they're aiming for a lot of just player expression as they don't want people doing the same combos, options, set play with only one right answer, right? They want you as a player to take any given character and no two players will play that same character the same way. They believe the way to get new players into it and just enjoying the game in general isn't to make the game itself easier, but to create an environment with matchmaking specifically, rank, all that kind of stuff, that's easy for players, especially beginners, to play with other people around the same skill level. If you can consistently get people to play against people that are in the same skill level, you know, that kind of grouping, there isn't the need to force new players just to play like the pros, right? Nor is there any need to make game mechanics that reduce the skill gap, you know, like, you do XYZ mechanic and now a newbie can beat a pro, all that kind of stuff, to help them out. So as long as there are uh, people playing with people around their own skill level, there's no need to dumb down anything at the higher end of things. That said, they are very confident in their ability to make a game that is good for both new players, while keeping the advanced, uh, you know, very heavily skill-based stuff the uh, original players like as well. The tricky thing is to make uh, Guilty Gear Strive different from previous Guilty Gear games. The, you know, old players have been playing Xard and all that for a long time, or if you've been playing Accent Core or whatever, like they're basically solved games, right? And the big goal right now is to make something new, like truly new, so it's good for the new players, and if you're an old GG vet as well, then don't just assume you got it made and you already know everything off the bat. Going into our second question here, will the story in Guilty Gear Strive be a continuation of the previous games, or will it be a start of a new story? The developers state here the plot is a direct continuation of the Xard series, but will provide basically a fresh start for new people to jump in on. And that's good because Guilty Gear has some pretty complicated lore. They do have something uh, in the works in the future for people interested in the overall story, and they'll talk more about that in a later date. For question 3, notice that there are a few subtle, almost hidden mechanics and techniques such as changing directions when Roman cancelling an air dash or by using faultless defense after an air dash to fall faster. Do you plan to have more similar, advanced and unique techniques and are there more that players seem to have missed in the beta? To this, the developers state here, as of the closed beta test, they want to collect data about what players would find and how they would use it in the limited time they had. When they release info on the official channels about the game, like how they did the whole Roman Cancel showcase earlier, it uh, impacts how people will play. They want people to play uh, the closed beta test in a neutral state without basically any interference. <laughs> They're also looking for players' ability just to figure out stuff on their own and just to exceed the developer's expectations. Also to note, there will be many major changes compared to the closed beta test in the final build of the game. So there's going to be more info on that at a later date, but don't worry, they've listened, there's a lot of changes coming. The next question is basically, hey, why are you talking about rollback netcode in these Q&As, right? And to that, they just basically go, well, we're using rollback netcode, it's going to be in the game, please understand. 
Uh, it's we did this because of you. So yeah, we got rollback netcode. Don't worry about it. With our penultimate question here, are you considering introducing a ranking system to New Guilty Gear? With the ranking system in Exard, intermediate players would be randomly matched with high level players and end up ranking down. On the other hand, however, being able to choose your opponent could create a disparity in ability between the players of the same rank. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts about these ranking systems as well as what you plan to do from here on. My personal thinking is that we don't need rankings in our small community. I do think that it's important to get a sense of satisfaction within your own group. However, I think having something like titles such as Master of the Saul matchup might be good enough. The developer's answer is they got details to announce through different avenues, aka not this Q&A, but the rank system they have will be 100% different from prior games. Before, basically the arcade system was the baseline, right? And uh, they use that as like a base for how the console release works. This is the first Guilty Gear to be made 100% with online play in mind from the start. So the base is already very different. They've noticed in older games, players would basically avoid modes that impacted their rank because they didn't want to lose points. Having multiple modes also basically splits the player base, making it harder for beginners to fight people around their skill level. They see these as two major problems going forward and they want to avoid them. They also note here that there will be online features for Guilty Gear Strive for people who want to take their matches very seriously, so I'm assuming some sort of ranked yes. And our final question here, how does the development team feel about the current state of innocent blocking and faultless defense? With the added emphasis of risk, even though it's hard to see with how the UI is implemented, which is another common complaint that I've had myself, Faultless defense seems to have a strong place with a defensive option. It both minimizes risk gain and forces uh, whiff punishing situations from a defender who is good at making decisions and paying attention to the opponent. However, instant block seems like it's lost a lot of its interesting aspects from prior titles. And basically, effectively, yo, it's not very good anymore and not really much reason to use it. To this, the developer state here, they are still internally debating about certain defensive mechanics. Instant block in the closed beta test, they decrease the reward for success simply to avoid it becoming like 100% you have to do it mandatory mechanic that affected all levels of gameplay and all matchups, right? So they wanted to avoid that. However, in turn, they basically removed most of the reason to do it to begin with. Uh, so they're rethinking instant blocking at a fundamental level, uh, just both mechanically and input wise. And in case you don't know, by the way, as it stood in the beta, instant block was just basically hit back the block, you know, right before the attack connects. You get your little flash white and you get a little bit of extra meter, but that was it. They state the next time we can have a look at the game here, they're going to have something much more exciting to look at. So, hey, quote unquote, look forward to what we have come up with. And that's all the questions they take in this time. They don't take a million questions each time. And obviously questions that are a little bit more respectful probably have a much greater chance of being answered but still i'm very happy especially for a japanese company honestly let's get real here to have any kind of insight into the process of making the game uh they want the new strive game to be the future of guilty gear going forward and the fact that they are listening the fact that they're constantly making changes that you change the netcode part way through development right means they are listening so once again if you want to send your questions to them check the video description there will be stuff there for you and that's it for this video, basically. So, my friends, hey, thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well. Go out and play some Guilty Gear.